wanted to come and talk about this case that has bothered me for years. It happened right here in Pike County, Kentucky. It's local. This happened in 2006. And as of today, it's still unsolved. I could, I could talk about this without even looking at the computer screen. Um, this man's name was Glenvir Osborne. Glenvir Keith Osborne. His family mostly knew him, or he went by Glenn. At the time he went missing, he was a 67-year-old man. Um, here's what's known about this. This man, he had told his daughter that he was going to take out some money from the bank and go to a land auction. So, according to his daughter, he told her that a friend of his, and this man was interviewed, this man was questioned by the police, this man, um, I'll get more into him in a minute, but Glenn Osborne went to the Community Trust Bank in the Weddington Plaza. For those of you familiar with the Pikeville area, you know that that is right by the the plaza where J.C. Penney and... Um, save a lot now four days later his truck was found by Peking now Peking is in the same it's not exactly the same plaza like you have this one section that is like you have JC Penney you have a hardware store um, the bank then you go up a hill you, you you go through like uh, you go behind Dairy Queen and um, a Mexican restaurant, and then you go up the hill, and then there is Big Sandy Superstore Furniture, Peking, and a couple other stores in that plaza. And that's where his truck was found in that plaza. Now he did not park his truck there and walk from there down to the bank and walk back. Um. I believe his truck was, I believe he was either followed from that plaza and someone drove his truck back, dropped it off and had somebody pick them up, or he was never in his truck. Somebody else moved his truck, took his keys and moved his truck. Either way, they said that he had a $20,000 cashier's check from the bank and a substantial amount of cash. I don't think in any of the stories that I have read that they ever named the amount of cash. But I'm sure that the cashier at the bank and the bank manager probably turned that over to the police and probably told what time of day he came in there and how much he took out. And who knows how much more cash he may have had on him that he had in his home. So I don't know how much cash they were talking about. But when he left the Community Trust Bank, that was the last time he was ever seen other than this one friend who claimed that he picked him up and drove him to wherever this was supposed to have been, that he was going there to meet somebody else, whatever. So, the friend in this scenario, according to the police and the family, has changed his story several times. He's been uncooperative with the police. He, he did come in for questioning with the police in the beginning, and then he became uncooperative, which is, it could just be that he asked to speak to an attorney and asked his attorney to speak for him, and that can some people could see that as him proclaiming his innocence, and maybe he was, but others see it as being uncooperative. Why won't he tell them exactly where he dropped this man off at? Why won't he tell him who the other man was, and why did he just take him there and drop him off? And why was this man's truck parked at Peking when the the bank is? Um. I mean, yes, of course, you could walk there. You could, technically. But more than likely, nobody would. I, I mean, I wouldn't. I wouldn't park at Peking and walk all the way across this plaza, down the hill, through another parking lot, and then back with that much cash on me. And me, 67-year-old man. So, um... 
So, here is the story, and this is on Unsolved Appalachia. Glenvere, a diabetic, required insulin on a daily basis. Um, law enforcement has not ruled out foul play, and if you consider how suspicious it is that the friend claimed to have picked him up and has changed his statement numerous times and is unwilling to cooperate now, it does not paint him in a very good light. This person at the uh, Unsolved Appalachia just goes on to say that he himself has reached out to the Kentucky State Police and has not heard anything back from anyone and was hoping to get some more information on this. This is from the Charlie Project. Missing since March 2, 2006 from the Coal Run, Pikeville, Kentucky area. He is a male, race white, age 67 at the time of the disappearance. Seen in the Weddington Plaza in Coal Run on March 2, 2006. He called his daughter at around 11 a.m. and said he had withdrawn money from his bank account and planned to put in a bid at a land auction. He had a $20,000 cashier's check and have withdrawn a substantial amount of cash. He was never heard from again. His F-150 truck was found four days later in the plaza's parking lot. Now they say the plaza and they make it sound like one place and anybody from Pikeville and Coal Run and the area knows that it's actually two separate shopping plazas divided by a roadway, divided by an intersection. Um, you would either have to get back out onto the main highway and drive down to the next red light to go into that second plaza, or you could go there in the back. There's a trailer park and a couple of restaurants, and you can go through that intersection and up the hill to the next plaza. You can walk there, but I, I've never seen anybody walking there unless they were you know, without a vehicle, and this man had a truck, so what was the point in him walking there, dear? And surely in 2006, these stores and banks had cameras. If anyone was seen getting in and out of this man's truck, why did the police not release that, you know? It is uncharacteristic of Osborne to leave without telling his family where he was going. Um... And that's pretty much it. That's pretty much where this story ends. Now, like I said, I remember when this first happened. I remember watching the news stories because it caught my interest, you know. It, it just caught my interest. And here is a story that was in 2017 called The Scene of the Crime. And this is from Mountaintop Media, which is a local a media outlet, news outlet in Pikeville, Kentucky. And there's a video, if anyone's interested, I will put the link to this in the um, comments. There's a, um, I know this video is not very professional at all, but I mean, I'm just, I just picked my phone up and started talking about this because this case, this case has been on my mind for so long. I, I've, I've, this is, I, I, I saw a thing on Facebook the other day on one of the missing, murdered, unsolved websites, and it said, what is one case you would like to see solved in your lifetime? And, of course, people were saying John Bonet, Ramsey, and some of those bigger cases like that. But locally, for me, it's this case, um... I mean, I think personally that it's pretty cut and dry and why the police has not charged this man with any, I mean, I, I guess without any kind of blood evidence or any kind of money trail, um, because of course nobody was going to take that cashier's check and try to cash it. Um, this is the reason why I believe that the, I don't know because <laughs> I guess the police are keeping some things quiet and secretive, not letting too much information get out to the public. The $20,000 cashier's check was going to be the down payment that he thought on this land. I don't even know if this land 
auction was for real or not. I don't know if it was something that he read about in the local paper and asked this friend to go along with him, or if it was something that this so-called friend approached him about. And let's, let's pull our money and go put in a bid on this. I don't know the details about any of that. It hasn't really been talked about here. KeyStatePolice.org page, which I checked out about a week or so ago. Um, witness interviews can account for his activities up to his last known whereabouts in the plaza on March the 2nd. But his activities after this are unknown. Although he was a diabetic and required insulin daily and had to take medication for other health reasons, foul play has not been ruled out. Any information regarding his investigation can be directed to Detective Amos Atkins at the Kentucky State Police. See, I can't find anything going back to those early days, those first days and weeks. Any news stories? WYMT archives might have something. WMM or um, WKYT archives might have something. But this is a case that has stuck in my mind, and um, today this man would be 83 years old, but of course I don't think he's alive at all. I think he died the day, I think he probably died within an hour or so after leaving that bank parking lot. Uh, I don't know what might have happened. A scenario that I can imagine in my mind is that this so-called friend picked him up or they arranged to meet. He may have told him, meet me at Peking parking lot, and that may be why the man's truck was there. He may have walked out of the bank, got into his truck, and drove up to that other plaza, and the guy might have picked him up there. Information on the case from local sources may or may not be correct. Osborne was last seen at the Weddington Branch Plaza in Co Run on March the 2nd, 2006. It's pretty much the same thing. His truck was found near a Chinese restaurant. There were no indications of a, of a struggle at the scene of the truck. Investigators don't believe Osborne drove his truck to the plaza himself. That could be because of his height and whoever, and sometimes they will check the the way that the seat and the way that the steering wheel is placed. And if someone is like myself and very short, if my car were found and the seat was way back, that wasn't me because when I drive uh, at five foot one, I'm you know my, I'm like right up in the thing, you know. So that tells me that they may have checked that out. Or it could also be that they did look at cameras. And maybe they're just not putting that information out there because they're trying to hopefully. But I mean, after what, 15 years, 17 years? What? Floyd County. There's several out of Floyd County. I'll, I might come back and read some about those. Pike County. Adam Daniels. Um. Crystal Hall, that's that's the old one. Valerie Hunt, Jimmy Kelly, Glenvere Osborne of Virgie, Kentucky. Pretty much the same thing. It just it, you know, it just tells what they know about the day he went missing, his height and weight. His truck was found four days later abandoned in the Weddington Square uh shopping center parking lot. A friend allegedly claimed to have picked him up from the area. See, the friend is saying he picked him up, and the way he's making it sound is that he drove him there, that this man left his truck and, and rode with him, and that when they got to wherever it was they were supposed to have been going, he decided, Glenn Beer, Glenn Osborne, decided, I'm going to stay here and... Um, Meet with these other people. You you can go on back. I don't need a ride back. I'll get a ride back. This is the original story that he told. And since then, it's been reported that this man... And they've never named him. But I guess they, they won't in the news because 
without anything to hold him on that, you know, um, they've never told who he was or where he's at now or if he's still in the Pike County area. It's it's perplexing to me. You know, I, I don't get it. I don't get how they can arrest one person on absolutely zero evidence or no no grounds other than a, somebody else pointing the finger at them. And yet, this person was the last known person to, and admitted that they were with the person at the time that they went missing and has never been charged with anything. I don't get it. But I may never get it. But to end this video, I'll just say I personally believe that whoever this man was, I believe he or maybe more than one person, because while there are lots of back roads and backwooded areas to hide a body or to burn a body or to dispose of a body in eastern Kentucky, to do that yourself... Um, Without any evidence ever being found 15, 16 years later is almost unheard of. And um, I just don't think that this is... I would like to see the police move on this, but I don't think they ever will. And the family, as time passes, they have found no answers. This is just my own personal speculation that whoever this man was either set this man up ahead of time and intentionally set him up to take him out and rob him and murder him because the cashier's check was for. And I don't know. But I may never know. But I would like to know in my lifetime what happened to this man and get closure and to see his family get closure, and to see the police do their job and make a move on this, and see this man be held accountable. I mean, could, did he take the police to the place where he said he left this guy? Did he? Did the police ask him, drive us to where you drove to, and show us where you left him? And did you not wait around while he was meeting this unknown person? And say, okay, I'll wait around until this guy shows up to make sure you've got a ride back home. Give me a break, people. I mean, I'm not even, I'm I, I'm not trying in any kind of police law enforcement or anything like that. I'm not trained in any kind of, I, I'm just somebody with curiosity who talks about these cases based on my own thoughts about them. And I can see through that story, you know. So hopefully for this family, they will one day get closure and this case will be solved. This man's whereabouts will be known for this family to be able to put this to rest. And maybe this man who took part in this will be finally come to answer for what happened. And if I'm wrong, and this was just a case of I dropped my buddy off and I never saw him again myself, then, you know, at least that man can clear his name. It looks like he would want to, you know. Anyway, thanks for watching.